You probably never heard of Viola Spolin. That is, unless you're a teacher, psychologist, minister, playwright, in advertising, possibly in prison, a producer, director, singer, dancer, actor, or anyone who's involved in education or the arts. Spolin was called the High Priestess of Improvisation. Her theater games, she said, could invoke genius. Before she fell ill, Spolin taped some of her classes, offering a rare glimpse of the master at work. The thing is that if you have a problem and you can use a game, you're taking out of the, out of the head and we've got to think about it and the boredom, and you are getting it into the body. Body, mind, intuition. That's what we're after. Body, mind, intuition. The intuition. Spolin invented the theater games the like Who Am I, Mirror, and Transformation in the 30s when she was drama supervisor for the Works Progress Administration, the WPA, at Hull House in Chicago. Originally created to help students feel more natural on stage, the games took on a life of their own to produce some of the funniest moments in modern theater. The following game is called Gibberish, in which two actors improvise a completely made-up language, with a third actor interpreting their conversation for the audience. You mean to tell me you would come in front of a group of people and have absolutely nothing to do? Of course. What else can you do? A variety of things. <laughs> Theater games are played on a bare stage where actors, based on audience suggestions, create an entire world filled with furniture, food, science labs, spaceships, even hot tubs. The best players can be so convincing, the audience swears it can almost smell the space food set upon an invisible table. Once they've got what's called the wear, the actors are given a game. This throws the mind off balance, says Spolin's son, director Paul Sills, which leads to the intuition. Viola says you have to be tricked into it. The game does that. In the 60s, Sills, in his mother's words, brought her work to the world. He played her games with Mike Nichols and Elaine May, then again when he formed Chicago's Second City, which influenced comedic greats including Robin Williams, Whoopi Goldberg, and virtually every cast member from the television show Saturday Night Live. In rehearsal for a recent show, Sills tells actors the intuitions where true genius lies. I don't think you should be afraid of going for the not knowing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very zen, very zen. In other words, where out comes stuff that you don't know is coming and that you couldn't possibly even say where it gets from. They, you're, you're really trying to get there. Because that's where the magic happens, according to Sills. The theater is about nothing but presence. The experience there, if it works is of a poetic reality and it's a profound moving often and uh, remarkable experience i mean it's art we can be anything in viola's work you can be a queen a hobo a fish a barnacle <laughs> a tree a bit a wisp of wind anything anything Actress Valerie Harper says Spolin's improvisation, like method acting, is used to help actors be their most convincing. But method relies on memory, perhaps conjuring up anger from a childhood disappointment. Improvisation springs from the intuition, says Harper, a deeper source of creativity. People have told her, uh, Buddhist monks and people in metaphysics and so forth, have said, you have opened an ancient door. So her work, in my view, it just stepped over the memory. Say we don't need memory. We need to open to allow the muse to flow. A muse that flows in traditional theater, too, from Shakespeare to Neil Simon, says veteran actor Hamilton Camp. Playing a part it sometimes can be very tedious after you've run for six months. You found your moments, you got your laughs or your tears or whatever it was, and, and then you go on automatic. Well, if you could improvise it every night with the same lines keeping that chancy open I don't know what's gonna happen I've done plain, done it a thousand times when I step on the stage I am innocent but Spolin didn't create theater games simply to turn out more actors she believed the games could break down barriers in a world where she saw people growing more distant and alienated from each other at a 1972 speech she made the following prediction I do feel that 
the day will come, I doubt that I will be here for it, when people will meet from everywhere to play the game, to question where am I, who am I, and what am I doing. And so perhaps together all of us can seek and perhaps evoke the oracle to answer our questions. Play the game, said Viola Spolin, and you may find yourself on a trip to the unknown, the intuitive, and perhaps beyond that, to the human spirit itself.